welcome to an episode of Cancer Tamer. I'm your host, Dr. Charlie Ferrer. And hi, I'm Deborah Santuli Barone. And you'll notice that we are actually filming outside of the studio now. Um, we're having some technical issues as we learn how to do this, but please bear with us. Um, we are, um, I, and I wanted to explain one of the reasons why we're filming outside of the studio. Everybody knows what's happening with COVID, right? COVID is back on the rise. And so everybody's a little uptight and the mandate from the mayor of you can only go into public venues if you're vaccinated. I'm not vaccinated um, for the COVID virus because of my immune system and issues with the cancer. And I refuse to be vaccinated because I don't think that we have enough education on the vaccine yet. Um, and Deborah is vaccinated. So, yay, Deborah. Um, so, um, so we are doing um, differences. I don't want this to become a political piece of, you know, do you get vaccinated? Do you not? That's like any other treatment options, a personal issue that I think everyone should, um, should have for themselves. That's true. You know, it's really up to each individual and to talk to their doctors and then make a educated guess, uh, a decision on it. <laughs> right. And, you know, and some decisions are personal, some are religious, some are medically based. And so whatever your reason is, you know, stick to your guns and, and stay healthy. It is flu season, right? So be careful with um, how you expose yourself to others, including your kids if they're back to school. Those little munchkins bring in all kinds of, of stuff with them home. They don't wash their hands. <laughs> yeah, and on that, um, we do have, uh, we're gonna do a little question and answer later, but be careful about the sanitizers that you use. A lot of them have endocrine disruptors um, which will affect your hormone balance and affect your health. So be very careful. Yes, yeah, speaking of that, especially the ones that are scented, those are synthetic fragrances, just like your perfumes, your hair, your shampoos, your uh, cleaning fluids at home. You know, synthetic uh, fragrances aren't good. They have these things called phylates in them which you said are endocrine disruptors, they can cause autoimmune diseases and put you at a higher risk for cancer too. Right, so be careful. You wanna stay clean and you wanna keep your hands clean. Notice what you're using. Um, so be conscientious of that. One of the yeah. things that we wanna do, it's the new year. Yay, 2022. Yay. Happy new year. Happy New Year, everybody. Um, one of the things that we wanted to do was talk about all the all the things, just do a quick little recap like we do every year about what was done last year with Cancer Tamer and the foundation and all of the things that we were able to do for individuals. So um, for those of you that don't know, Cancer Tamer helps advocate for women with breast cancer in our community here on Staten Island, as well as anywhere else. So people have been calling us, have been asking questions, um, we had um, the wonderful um, turkey basket um, giveaway that we had some wonderful yes. giveaways for turkey baskets. And, and that's thanks to uh, Mid Island Rotary, is that correct? Yes, and, and Mid Island Tamer. Rotary and, and the other rotaries here on Staten Island were wonderful. Um, mm -hmm. Where we, I think it was over a thousand people got turkey baskets this year. Not just yeah, cancer some of tamer. my some of my people, our people are cancer tamer. Yes, we yeah. gave to some people. Yeah, so we had this wonderful turkey. You got this big turkey, um, and you had all the fixings for it. And so we wanted to give a big thank you to um, Mid Island Rotary and the other Rotaries of Staten Island who uh, helped us be able to do that. Um, for this year coming up, you can always request a, thir a turkey basket and always help donate to a turkey, I can't say the word, turkey <laughs> basket. Um, That's funny. So, some of the oh, other what else things. did we do? We got yeah. to see uh, ABBA um, at 
at St. George Theater. Thanks to St. George Theater that donated tickets for cancer patients. Yeah. And we Thanks had to you that what, you like over out. 20 of our members went um, yeah. to, to view ABBA live in concert. Not ABBA the people, but ABBA the concert, uh, which right. was so cool because I love ABBA. Um, <laughs> and so we, we got some wonderful tickets. Thank you again, you know, um, St. George yeah, St. George, thank you, theater. Yeah. Um, what I would, some of the other things that we did too, we were going to, um, last year we went to a few national parks. Um, we, we got a new vehicle to be able to take people around to help them with their, with their um, get back and forth to the doctors as well as just doing fun activities. So we went to uh, Morristown and saw the um, exhibits there in Morristown, New Jersey. Uh, my mm -hmm. favorite was um, seeing Thomas Edison's uh, home and seeing uh, his workshop. So Thomas Edison, the light bulb guy. In yeah. case, <laughs> you know, and, I, and, I, and I have to say that because, you know, in my head, I always just thought, oh, light bulbs. Okay, big deal, right? Mm -hmm. But when you stop and you look at it and you go to his place, it was actually four stories of all these things that he was inventing and helping others and, and promoting others. And his library was four floors tall. You know, yeah, he, had he, had a lot like, of patents. he had not like patents, he had like 10,000 books. Um, and he had, I looked at, he had this little cot on the side in his library where if he got really tired, he would take a nap. You that's know. what you need. That's right. <laughs> um, and, you know, and he invented the, the, the phonogram. So mm -hmm. you could, you could hear, you know, so our records. Um, and then I started thinking, oh my God. And he was connected to the telegraph. And I thought it was so cute because he named his, his nicknames for his kids were dot and dash. Because <laughs> you had the, if you, if you remember the, the telegraph, it was a lot of dots. It was the Morris code, you know, right. dot, 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 dash, dot, 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 dash. And each one specified a, a letter. Um, and so he, you know, very cute. He named his kids dot and dash. Um, and so, you know, so when you're looking at it, here's the telegraph, the telephone, and now we have iPhones. So, you know, it went from one little thing to more. And the reason I'm bringing that up is because imagine what you can create. Hmm. Yeah, yeah if you work you long hours and don't get sleep, right? <laughs> <laughs> you can do all that. Yeah. Or even, you know, creating a story, creating a, a musical, creating, you know, your own memoirs. There's so many things that we can create that we forget. You know, even if it's something as creating, you know, food and recipes and, and things like that. You know, we right. can be very inventive when we want to. That's so true. We... Well, I got <laughs> to see the uh, Van Gogh uh, exhibit in the city. Um, they, I think it's for, yeah, I think they do ask for uh, COVID testing uh, documents. Um, they usually limit it to only certain, certain amount of people in the place, but it was very, it was beautiful. I did this catacombs and um, that was like in the village. And it was the old St. Patrick's Church before they built the real wow. big one up in the 40s. And then I just saw the Michelangelo exhibit of the Sistine Chapel painting on the ceiling. So there are still things out there. You, you know, we have to see uh, how many people they allow in and who can go and who can't go. But the national parks, like you said, anyone can go to. So that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah, and the national parks are open. They do request that even on the premises, whether you are vaccinated or not, you wear, you know, uh, covering. And that's fine. Right. Um, you yeah. know, so when we went to the parks and our group went to the parks, we would, everybody would have their mask and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the other thing that we did was we gave away lymphedema pillows again. Uh, yes. We actually um, gave lymphedema pillows as well to Project Hospitality. Um, because they run a homeless shelter where the individuals, they don't have beds, but they have chairs. So the individuals are sitting up um, while they're taking a nap for the night. And so we gave away some of the lymphedema pillows so that they could have it as a pillow of their own. Um, 
And so that was something that we were very proud of to be able to yes, use. And proud of you because you're the one who found someone to make pillows and yeah. beautiful designs on the pillows. So thank you, yeah. Charlie. Yeah, Camille was, was very wonderful on making the pillows for us. Um, yeah. And she did them in memory of her mom who had passed away from breast cancer. So I thought that was really uh -huh. wonderful. Um, so honoring her, you know, for that. Um, the other things that we did too was we did workshops. For those of you that don't know, we have workshops online through Zoom. Um, and so if you go to our website, cancertamer.org, you can see some of the various different workshops and connections that we have for individuals. And so we've had quite a few workshops online. Um, one of my favorites is called Reducing Your Financial Toxicity, which we'll be doing again next month. And it talks about all the ways that you can lower your, fine, uh, your expenses, um, especially while you're going through cancer because of the fact that, um, you know, you may have limited resources or you have um, your your expenses become too high because you're, you're doing all these, um, you know, you're buying new medicine or you're buying gauze pads after your surgery and things like that. So being able to bring some of your credit card debt down um, and being able to do that. And so that workshop, which is um, reducing your financial toxicity actually talks about all the different things that you can do to help yourself mm -hmm. out, to be able to, um, to control the expenses in some way. Speaking of expenses, I find it mind boggling that uh, patients that need CBD oil or CBD pills or vapors uh, for vaping because of pain or neuropathy, that it's not covered by insurance. I've talked to a number of people, number of hospitals, and uh, it's just very sad. And I wish people would lobby because the uh, New York State Medical Marijuana Program that you have to apply for after you see a medical marijuana doctor and you can get a card and you can go to these dispensaries. But uh, the amazing thing is you have to pay cash. They won't take a check. They won't take uh, credit cards. So I, I tend to wonder what's going on. It's cash. and. Um, it's not covered by insurance. Yeah. So I want everyone to know this, that hopefully there are people out there and politicians in particular that can lobby to try to get this covered by insurance because there's so many people out there um, that do not want to take the regular prescribed medical uh, painkillers because they get addicted to them. Yeah. And so something like CBD oil or pills can help without uh, causing an addiction. Yeah, and, and a lot of that also goes to who runs our medical institutions, which are insurance companies, um, mm -hmm. you know, when you stop and look at it, because they say, well, I'm not going to have you do this test or that test or this medicine or that, you know, so we do have to realize how, you know, who's really um, going through and, and dictating what we can and cannot have. Um, and one of the things that we always advocate about is the fact that, you know, make sure that you ask your doctor to fill prescriptions. Anything that you need should be on a prescription pad. You know, something as simple as gauze pads. Your, your insurance covers the cost of gauze pads. And most people say, oh, well, you know, it's only a couple of bucks. So let me break it down for you, just in case you forget what a couple of bucks are. You can get a box of 25 gauze pads, 25 for about $6.50, $6.50, maybe $7.25. And you figure, well, I can afford that for the month. Here's the piece that you're forgetting. A box of 25 gauze pads is gone in less than a week. Because if you had surgery on both breasts and you had a mastectomy, you need to change those gauze pads at least two to three times a day. Those gauze pads, you're using at least two, maybe four for one breast. So now you're down to four a day, one time, times three, that's 12. Your 25 pack just lasted you two days. So <laughs> since you have seven days in a week, you know, let's do the math. So if we say roughly $7, 
So you got $14 now in two days. Times, there's seven days in the week. So you, if you're doing them in two days, you got another four. So four times seven is 28. So you're spending $28 a week on gauze pads. 28 times four, right? So now you're already at close to $90 to, right? right? So $90 a month on gauze pads. And you're going to need gauze pads for at least three, maybe four months until you heal. And if you're getting, you know, um, replacement surgery and you're, and you're having reconstruction done, now you're up to another six, seven months of doing that. So your gauze pads are going to cost you at least a thousand dollars a year by the wow. time you're done. So this is why I say, why are you going to spend that? You think it's only $7 a month, but it's not, you know, you already have us at $90 for one month. And is the gauze pad the only thing that you're going to need? No, you're going to need other things that you're paying for, like vitamins and zinc and, you know, prescriptions. So ask your doctor to write a prescription for gauze pads. It's that simple. And your insurance would then be able to cover it. That's so, great. Um, and it's under durable medical equipment. Um, mm. Same thing with Xyroform. Xyroform are these yellow um, pads that you can put on your wounds to help you heal. They won't prescribe it unless you ask for it. You know, with all the complications I had, I was using Xyroform all the time um, to help heal, especially when you have such deep cuts. And so, <laughs> again, something that your doctor has to prescribe because those puppies are a dollar a piece. Um, you know, if you're lucky, you can find them for 75 cents. But again, how many are you using? How many days? So I was already at $60 a day for Xyroform, or not a day, but a month. So 60 for that, plus the 90 for the gauze pads, you know, so you're already at $150. So notice what you're spending, because all of these little things add up. <clears throat> it's kind of like going to the dollar store. You know, right. you never get out with a dollar. You spend like $40, $50 after. So notice and ask your doctor to make, right. to, to write these prescriptions for you. It's no skin what on What I find, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. What I find strange too is that recently um, a family member of mine, I was trying to find a, a uh, integrative uh, medical doctor and they have a great one at Cornell I had been to. My insurance covered it. So when I called, they said that they didn't take um, one of the insurances that my family member had. So I said, okay, fine, I will pay cash, check, credit card my, for my own money. And they said, well, you can't do that. That's illegal. And I said, well, why? And they said, well, if your family member, if we don't take their insurance, you're not allowed as, you know, someone else in the family to pay for it. That's illegal, you know, and, and that person could get kicked off of their insurance because well, you have a family sense. member that can afford to pay it or whatever. I found that crazy. So that, that is crazy. Yeah. So I can't bring this person to this great, you know, integrative uh, medical doctor. And the reason why I wanted to pick that one, because it's based out of a, a, um, a hospital. It's not one of these practices that are private, that normally then you're getting sucked into buying their vitamins, their detox, whatever, you know, this, they're not selling you that they're telling you what you need to do to stay healthy. And yeah. it's so frustrating because I, you know, I, I save the money to, to bring this person. And they say, no, you can't because if their insurance finds out that they weren't covering it, but you're paying it. No, you're, you're not allowed to do that. Uh, so that makes sense. So they, they want to make sure you don't have money, money. You, yeah. But want to make sure you don't have money to, to pay somebody. for it. Yeah. But yet it's an independent person, you know, who's older than 16 you know, so uh, it's just weird. I mean, like, what if they had a rich uncle that said, hey, I'll pay. And yet, boom, you still can't get it. Yeah. <laughs> I just yeah. find that crazy. Yeah, it, it, it gets crazy with insurance. And so that's yeah. one of the pieces that we always talk about. Of 
you know, even if they say, well, your insurance isn't going to cover it, because that's a favorite phrase from the medical community. Right. Oh, well, your insurance isn't going to cover it. It's like, okay, my insurance isn't going to cover it. I still want you to write the prescription. I still want right. you to go through the steps. I still want you to fill this out because I'll go and fight with the insurance company. I'll right. go and see it through. Because a lot of the times when they say your insurance isn't going to cover it, it's because they don't want to jump through the hoops and your insurance. Right, you're right. You know, I, I find that a lot of times what's happening is that there's so much complacency going on, um, so much apathy that's going on in the physician's office that they're not doing their jobs or they're not doing it to the extent that they should. It's like they mm -hmm. only do so much and then they stop. Right. You know, um, and so it's it's that part of requiring them to go the extra mile because that's their job to go the extra mile. And at this point, we've become a society. So I don't want to just blame the doctors, but we've become a society of complacency. We tend yes. to do only what's required, only the minimum work, only the, you know, the minimum effort. And that's why we're in such bad shape right now. Um, you know, with our families, our relationships, and so on. A totally different topic to talk about. But <laughs> it is that part of let's stop being so complacent and let's start stepping up. Right. And if it takes a little bit more energy, then you know what? It's a little more energy. And in the long run, it works. It works better for us. Well, on a happy note, um, I wanted to share uh, in 2021 that I received a letter from a person that I bumped into. I didn't know this person. I was at the Hilton Gardens uh, for a Women of Achievement Award, not my award, but everybody else's. And she came up to me, this woman, and said, I know you, you're on the show about cancer with Dr. Charlie. And I'm like, yeah, you know, that was like so exciting. She, she watches the show. She was very excited over it. She likes the episodes. Um, one in particular, where we're really talking personal where it gets to the point where I'm either in tears or Dr. Charlie's in tears, but it really shows the human side of both of us. And, uh, you know, she was, uh, she cried herself when she saw one of the shows and um, she's she said she was praying for both of us in the beautiful letter that she wrote. And yes. she wanted me to thank Dr. Charlie. And oh. she calls us the dynamic duo. <laughs> and I thought, look at that. that. That was really beautiful to get a really, you know, a fan letter. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, it is. <laughs> and and we, we Paula. Love That's all I'll say, you. Paula. Paula. Thank you so much, Paula. Um, and, and it is that wonderful piece. Every time we get emails from you or letters from you, our viewers, it, it lets us know that we're helping. It lets us know that, you know, this, this is why we do what we do. We try to advocate as much as possible. We try to bring information as much as possible. Everything we learn, we share. Um, which sometimes, you know, people don't want us to share um, because we, we put you on the spot or we put the physicians in the medical community and, and every other community on the spot saying that you need to do a little bit more, like stop being complacent, don't be mediocre. Um, so, you know, it's funny because we're working out of home and so we want to... I. We, we do appreciate, want to give a big shout out to everyone at Community TV because Mike and Kenny and Rosemary and Jamie and, you know, everybody that works there is helping us out to make sure that we can continue with the show. Yes. And Darlene, too, and all the other people that call us, um, you know, I don't remember everybody's name, but thank you for all your help. Yeah. And for those of you that don't know, our program is shown on community television, channels 34 and 35. You can also watch it on our website, www.cancertamer.org, O-R-G. Um, and again, this is our first show being recorded at home um, since we can't go into the studio. So 
you know, we don't have our fancy um, table and our graphics, but um, the people at CTV are going to help us add all of that in. So bear with us for the first couple of shows when we try to figure out how to how to be in the in the light and how to make sure that Deborah and I both show on screen as we're doing it ourselves from home. So this will be interesting. Yes, it, it took us quite a while to get to this point. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Dr. Charlie is very good. I'm not as savvy. She's very yeah. good. And so, so that's to this why you point. have one and big screen. You. Yeah, you have one big screen, one little screen, because we're on two different types of computers. Um, <laughs> and so they're coming in differently. Um, but wanting to give a shout out to them, but most of all, to give a shout out to all of you who have us, give us the desire and the, uh, the support for us to continue doing this. Our show is five years old. This is our wow. fifth year. Can you believe that? <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, yeah, we started in June of 2016. Um, was our first show in June of 2016. And now we're into 2022. So in June, it'll be our sixth year. Um, mm -hmm. And so all of those shows can be seen on the website. Um, www.cancertamer.org um, and on our website and you can ask questions um, write us at info at cancertamer.org right <laughs> yeah so um we have about another 30 seconds to go um, <laughs> <laughs> um, for this show and so Deborah do you want to say anything before we close uh, I would like to dedicate this show to uh, my friend, the late Linda uh, Gibbons, who I loved and adored, uh, passed away from cancer. And um, she was a beautiful person, with beautiful family and children. God bless you in heaven. And um, that's it. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you all for watching. <laughs>